Hey everybody, welcome back to Hello Dev World. Today is day 10 of 365 days of coding. If you don't know what that is, every day of 2021, I'm going to be posting a challenge on my blog in the morning and a solution to that challenge on my blog and on YouTube later in the day. If you would like to get those challenges in your email in the morning, I'm going to put a link in the description down below to sign up for that. Today is part three of making a sign up form. Today we're going to format our phone number and we're going to add validation for our phone number and our email. So let's get started. Now that we're back at the computer, this is the code that we wrote out in the previous video. If you didn't see part one, I'm going to put a card up here somewhere so that you can watch that if you want. This is where all that code is coming from. I'm going to also put a link in the description down below to the repository. So all of this code is in that day one branch. So if you just go to that branch, you'll have this exact same code. First things first, I'm going to create our style CSS file. You can name this whatever you want. I'm used to naming it styles. A lot of people do name it styles, but there are other things that you can name it. It doesn't have to be named styles. I'm going to put a link to the styles file that we just created in this index file so that all of the classes that we add styles to get those styles applied to them. I'm going to move the styles that we had from yesterday into that file and then get rid of these extra tags. I realized that I want to actually put everything in form tags because of how I want to do validation. So I'm going to add those really quickly. I'm going to make this header an H2 instead of an H1. It's just to make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to give it a class because I'm going to add a couple styles to it. In my form, I'm going to have my normal signup form on the left and all the OAuth on the right. So I'm going to put everything that we created in a div for that left side of the form. This is just so that form container is going to hold the whole form and the left side container is just going to hold that left side of the form. And then I'm going to make a right side container for the right side of the form. I'm also going to put this form in a div and you could just put the class on the form. That's totally fine. I just like having containers around other things just in case for some reason, I needed to add something to that div that wasn't in the form or something like that. It's not necessary in this case because we, we know we aren't adding anything. That's just usually how my code is written. So I'm going to put the form in a container so that we can add styling to that form. I'm going to add that div that I was talking about for the right side of the container. We're not actually going to put anything in it yet because we don't have our OAuth built yet, but we're just going to create the container that's going to hold all of it so that we can style it. And then between the left side and the right side, I'm going to have this little circle that says or because it's going to be, you can either use that sign up form or you can use the OAuth. So I'm going to create a div for that. And we're going to make that circle with CSS styles. You could just bring in a picture, I guess, if you wanted to, but it's faster and easier just to do it with CSS. And it's going to say or, so I'm going to put or in here and we're going to save that. And we can quickly pull up a screen and see how this is looking now but it will look very similar. If we refresh this page, you can see it does look very similar. The header is just a little bit smaller as we wanted, but everything else looks very similar because we haven't actually added any styles to it. We've just put some containers around it to make styling a little easier. So let's start adding the styles. First things first, I'm gonna add a background to my page. So I'm actually, first things first, I'm gonna add a background to my page. I'm gonna, actually be targeting the body tag just because I want the whole page to have that background. I'm also going to add a font family, which is going to be Arial. So it's going to be a sans serif font instead of a serif font. I just think it looks cleaner. I just like the look of it better. You don't have to do this. Um, but if you add it to the body tag, it will be applied throughout the whole body. So I don't have to add it to each individual section that I want it to because I want the whole page to be sans serif. For that background, I'm going to put a link in the description down below where I got the CSS for it. It's a great site. It has a couple of really cool backgrounds that just use CSS to create an, a nice looking gradient. I'm also going to put a link for a site that creates gradients for you. Gradients in CSS can be a little tricky. They can be kind of annoying to work with. So the second site that I'm going to link is a site that lets you build the gradient you want, and then it just gives you the CSS for it. If we save this and go back to our browser and refresh, you'll see we now have our sans serif font and this really cool, pretty background. Let's give this form 
a box to kind of all be in. And we're going to put it kind of towards the middle of the page. I don't want it exactly in the middle of the page, but it's going to be close. We're going to put those stylings on that form container, which was that container that was holding both the left side and the right side. So this is the big overall container. And we're going to give it a position relative. And what this does is it makes all of the positioning attributes that we're adding relative to the element itself, not anything else on the page. It won't affect anything else on the page. And all of the styling for the positioning will be for itself where it's supposed to be on the page rather than where it ends up landing because of effects from other things. We're going to give it a margin of 8% and auto. What this is doing is it's giving that top and bottom 8% and the margin auto on the sides is going to center it horizontally. We're going to give it a height so that we can get that actual box. If you don't add a height or a width, it'll only put the styling in the little section that you're giving it. It won't know to make it, you know, a, a big container. So we need to tell it the size of the container that we want. So I'm making it a min height because that is the minimum height that it has to be. But if I decide to add an extra input or something, it will get larger as necessary. You'll notice that I add, a, I use a lot of percentages in my styling. This isn't really necessary. I just find that if you're going to make something both desktop and mobile friendly, you usually have to do a little less tweaking on the mobile side. If you're building for desktop first and you use percentages, this isn't to say it's going to be hundred percent because it definitely isn't. You definitely will have to do some media queries and make your styling perfect for mobile, but this does get you a lot closer than just hard coding pixels everywhere. It also makes it easier because there are so many different screen sizes nowadays. It hits a lot more of those screen sizes without you having to do a bunch of media queries. I'm giving it a width for the same reason I'm giving it a height. This isn't going to change because if we added items, it would only change the height. It wouldn't really change the width. I only want those two sections. So I'm doing a set width for this one. I'm adding a box shadow and this can look kind of confusing. The first letter I give it is going to be the offset on the X axis. The second letter is going to be the offset on the Y axis. The third is going to be the blur radius. So how far you want it to go. And then the last one is going to be the color. You can play around with this all you want. This is just the one that I landed on. I'm going to give it a background color of white. I'm going to give it some padding. You'll notice that I'm actually only changing two of them. You could just do a CSS property for each one. You could do a padding bottom and a padding left, but I like them all in one spot. It's easier for me to change. It's less code. So the template for this is pop right bottom left. The first number is how many pixels away from the top. The second is how many pixels away from the right and then bottom and then left. I'm going to add box sizing and I'm gonna make it border box. What this does is when it calculates the height and the width of the container, it's going to take into consideration the padding and the borders. If we didn't have this, it wouldn't take that into consideration for the height and width that it's setting, and I want it to, just so that it doesn't mess up anything else later. You'll see this, I'm gonna add this to a couple of other places that might make a little more sense to add them to so that there's no overlap but that's what this does. And I'm gonna give it a border radius. And what this does is it makes the sharp edges at the top a little curved. The higher the number, the more curved it's gonna be. I'm gonna give it eight pixels. And if we save this and go back to our form, press refresh, you'll see we're now in the middle of the page. We have our background. We have this cool little shadow. It's not a harsh edge or anything. So it's a good start. You can see these are kind of towards the top. We have this ore still randomly on the bottom. So let's continue on. As I mentioned before, I'm going to add a little bit of styling to the header. So let's center it in that left container. I'm also going to add a margin top of 15% to that container that's holding all of our form to give it a little bit more space at the top. For all the form inputs, I want to make a, a couple changes to them. I think the border is a little dated, so I want to take that off. I'm going to just put a border on the bottom that's going to be gray and I'm gonna give them a bit more spacing between each other. We're gonna go into the form, we're gonna go into the form input that we've already created yesterday, and we're gonna change this margin from a margin bottom to just be a margin. And this is the same template as that padding, so it's gonna to be top, right, bottom, left. And again, I'm only changing two of them. You could put a property for each one that you wanna change. This to me is just cleaner and easier to use. I'm gonna add some padding to them. And since I'm not specifying within that template 
I'm just putting four, it's going to add it to all sides. All this other stuff should look pretty familiar to you. It's very similar to some of the stuff that we've already done. While I'm typing this out, go ahead and smash that like button and make sure that you click subscribe and that bell notification so you don't miss any of the challenges for the rest of the year. So now we're going to mess with the border. We're going to take it off. We're also going to get rid of the outline that shows up when you click on an input, that blue kind of fuzzy outline that you see. We're going to put a border on the bottom of those inputs and the template for this is the thickness of the border, which I'm going to make one pixel, the border style, which I'm going to make solid. You could also do like a dashed line. There's a couple other options as well. And then the last one's going to be the color that I'm going to make it. Border none has to go before you set that border later down below, because if you set it afterwards, it will override that border that you just set and you won't have a border at all. And we're going to change the font size a little bit, just to make it look a little neater. Now let's save this and go back over to our form and click refresh. And here you go. Right now it takes up more of the page than it takes more of the form than we're going to only because we haven't set a width for that right side. So right now it's taking up 80% because we haven't set a width for that left side. So right now it's taking up 80% of that left side container because we haven't actually set that container to anything. Eventually we're going to set it to be shorter. So it'll actually only take up the left side of that page, but we can see we have all of our inputs. They look a little nicer. They look more like something that you would see nowadays. I do think this sign up is a little close to the top, but we're actually going to take care of that in just a second with the styling for the left side of the form. For the left side of the form, it's going to have a position absolute. What that does is it takes it out of the normal flow of the document and puts it in a position based off of its parent. So if you had something that was going to go under it, it would overlap it. So you have to be careful with Z indexes, but we don't really, we're not really concerned about that with what we're working on. So we won't really have to worry about that. It's just something to keep in mind when you use this position, but this will make the position relative to the parent, which is that form container. It's going to have a left of zero, and this is how far you're supposed to have it from the left. We want this to be all the way on the left, so we want it to be zero. And we're going to give it a, and we're going to give it a width, and it's going to be half of that container, so it's going to be 50%. We're going to give it a height, and it's going to be 100 percent We're going to give it a height, and it's going to be 100 percent which makes it 100 percent of that form container. And we're going to give it a border box for box sizing again. Let's save that and go back to our form click refresh and we can see now the inputs have a little bit of padding on the side it's only taking up half of the form let's fix this button over here i'm gonna make it blue i'm just gonna use the built-in dodger blue color it's a pretty color you can make it whatever color you want i'm gonna make the color of the actual text white i'm gonna give it a margin and this time i'm gonna give it two numbers so the first number is gonna affect the top and the bottom and the second number is gonna affect the left and the right I'm going to set the width to 80% because I want it to be as long as the inputs are. I'm going to set it a height just so it could be a little bit taller. I just like how it looks that way. I'm going to give it a border none just to take off that black border that you'll see. I'm also going to give it a border radius to make them have those curved edges instead of the sharp edges. And then I'm going to use cursor. What cursor does is it changes the little pointer for your mouse. So instead of a little arrow, it's going to be a finger when you hover over the button. I'm going to do a text transform to uppercase so that all of the text in that button is uppercase. You could just go to the value and make all of them uppercase. This is just easier. If you just change the value, you don't have to worry about it. Um, it just does the transform for you. I'm also going to give it a font weight to make the font a little bolder. And if we go back to our form, press refresh, we don't see the changes. That is likely because I forgot to add a class to the submit button. So if we save that, refresh again, we get our sign up button. So we're starting to get there. Now we just have to worry about this right side and this or up here. So let's take care of those. This or circle is going to have a position absolute as well. And all of the different positioning is just where I like it. You can put it really wherever you want. This is just the positioning I landed on. I'm going to give it a width and a height again, so that it CSS knows how big to make what you want. So it's actually changing the 
the size of the circle. If I wanted it to be a bigger circle, it would be a bigger number. If I wanted it to be smaller, it would be smaller. I'm going to give it a background of light gray. I'm going to give it a border radius of 50%, and that is what's going to make it a circle. I'm also going to give it a line height. And that line height is going to be that same, the same size as the height of the circle. This will make the text centered in that circle. Everything else I'm going to do to it should look familiar. We've done it in the other ones. And if we save this and go back to our form, press refresh, we now have our circle in the middle of our form. I'm actually not in love with that, that shadow that I added. So I'm going... I don't love that shadow that we put on the or circle, so I'm actually just going to update it a little bit, save that, go back to our form, and I think that looks a little better. You'll notice that I have my inspector open. It just makes it easier for me to play with things as I'm styling. So if you want me to put a video on how to use that effectively, let me know. I'll put a video up. And all we have left is to do that right side. So let's finish that up. And this is going to be very similar to the left side. So I'm just going to copy and paste the left side. What's going to change here is we're going to change the left to a right. We're going to give it a black background and we're going to give it a border radius. And this is going to match the one for the form container itself. Because if we don't do this, the form container that we added those curves to is going to show edges on the right side because this section is going to be on top of that form container. If it doesn't have those curves, it'll be those sharp edges. And if we save this and go back to our form, press refresh, we have our right side. Tomorrow, we're going to be adding our validation for the form and for email and phone number. And we're going to be formatting our phone number. The day after that, we're going to fill in this OAuth section. So this won't be just black for the whole time. It just happens to be the last video that we're going to do. Make sure you click subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss the rest of the series or any of the other challenges for the rest of the year. And I'll see you tomorrow.